um, this month we are going to be um, spending an intricate amount of time dealing with 2020 vision. 2020 vision. Um, I hope on last last Sunday uh, that you enjoyed um, the presentation from um, my uh, my counterpart, uh, Dr. Pamela, and um, myself regarding what do you see and how people see you and how you see people. It is very important, ladies and gentlemen, that as you live uh, this life, that you give people the opportunity um, and that you reserve your judgment about people until actions have been proved. Good morning, young man. How are you? All right. One of my students and they call me Mr. Program. Bless you, man. Um, and one of the things that is so important is we look at ourselves, but sometimes it's good to look at ourselves through the lens of other people. Jesus said this, and he asked this of his disciples. Who do men say that I am? And actually what Jesus was saying, it was really, it, 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 was, it wasn't visual, it was really psychological. What he was asking was, how do man, men perceive me? And so, of course, his disciples began to compare Jesus to some men that were already living. Now, that's interesting because if you grew up long enough, somebody is going to say, you look like your daddy or you act like your mama or you dress like your mother, you walk like your dad, things of that nature. And they compare your personality, they, 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 they compare your persona to someone else. But look at your neighbor and say, I'm me and there's no other me but me. <laughs> the moment you compare me to somebody else, okay, so like we were talking about um, um, last Sunday, if I've got earrings and I'm all tatted up and my pants are hanging and I'm sitting on the corner, don't call me a gangbanger because you don't know who I am. Come on, somebody. If I have an alcohol issue, if I have a crack problem, or if I have a heroin problem, don't judge me by what I am doing. Judge me for who I am. And you know, look at your neighbor and just say, the, the closest folk to you really don't know who you are. They don't. They don't. <laughs> They sleep in your bed, they eat your food, um, they get on the bus with you, they work with you, they dance with you, they talk with you, but they really don't know who you are. And you begin to know someone and you begin to see them as they are when, this is amazing. when the big T comes to your life. Anybody will party with you and drink a 40 when you got the new house, you hit the lotto, come on. You got the new car, everything is going your way. But when you lose the house, 
and you're in the dark, Come on. and you don't have any food, who are your friends then? I'm going to ask um, Sister Pam to come. Trouble is not bad, you all. You know what I've learned in these 40 years of uh, being a preacher and a teacher uh, and an encourager? Trouble tells me who Friendship. my friends are. Thank you. Trouble tells me who my real friends are. <laughs> because when you're in trouble, that's when you need someone yes, to help you. Y'all know what I'm talking about? So many of us, we cry over trouble. When we see trouble come, whether it's economic, whether it's emotional, whether it's relational, and we sing that very sad song, where we, we feel sorry for ourselves, but it tells you who your friends are. Come on, somebody. Who in here have friends? Okay, got friends? How would you define a friend? Come on, talk to me, sir. Come on, bro. Yeah, come on. As far as, I mean, if you're in a rough spot and you know they got you, you know they're Stick you buddy. That's it. He's my boy. So guess what? If I'm in a tight squeeze, he gonna be there. Okay? What else? Got you, brother. Who else? person that encourages you when the name picks up and picks up. Wow. Anybody and everybody will pull you down. Yes. But a true friend, guess what? In carriages you. They strengthen you. That's a good friend. What else? Who else? Yes. Um, it transcends time and space. Wow. You don't have to necessarily see them every day or talk to them. You can still have that friendship. Friendship is the test of time. Which means, if I'm having a bad hair day, my friend doesn't stop being my friend because I had a bad, bad hair day. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. I lo we have some cold weathered friends. <laughs> some of us do. So when I'm bad, they bad. Come on. When I'm bad, my friends better be good. Because if I'm bad and my friends are bad, we're going to do some bad things. Come on, somebody. It's got to be that friend who says, no, nah, don't go there. Y'all didn't hear me. Don't, don't do that. Okay, you're not thinking clearly. One more, one more. Anyone? good friend will keep you connected to God. Wow. Amen. Will connect you. Will see you yes. through um, and help you and support you. Yes. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Just give your neighbor a high five and say, I'm looking for some real friends. I really am. Remember, our theme is 2020. I'm looking for some real people that are going to stay there, the constant, the consistency, okay? Now, generally, I don't, I don't turn over uh, the laboratory to just anyone, particularly with someone coming from Cumberland. I just, <laughs> <laughs> Sister Trent Venable, uh, is from a duke, and so I, I, but because she's so intelligent, um, and she did a wonderful job last Sunday, and really helping us understand from a perspective of a woman, from a perspective of an African American woman, um, the things uh, that happen when people see you. They see you in a interesting way. Um, come on, come on, Pam, please, please. Um, 
one thing and then I'm gonna let you go. My son and I were out last night on our way back to um, Fluvanna, and on our way back from Fluvanna, we decided to stop at a store. And it was a department store. We get some, they were gonna get a pair of shoes or like or something like that. And so it was already dark, it was about 6.30, and we went into a town and the store was about to close. And so, my son and I, Josh is 25, I'm 55. We're looking sharp. Come on, got my gold ring. I'm looking sharp. I have my voulez-vous on. Y'all don't know nothing about voulez-vous. It's a type of suit. And so he had his suit on and we're looking sharp. But when we stepped into the department store, the expression changed. So we're walking through the apartment store. Mother Carter gave us a couple of hundred dollars to spend. <laughs> so the police were called. We're just walking through the store. And I told my son, you go to that side and I'll go to that side to see how many of the store clerks would follow me. Come on. So since there weren't enough store clerks, they called the local police. And instead of the attendants asking me, can I help you, sir? Yeah. Y'all get it? Because I had a bankroll in my pocket. It was fat, brother, it was fat. <laughs> Look, that's what they thought it was. Now, even if I had my stuff, come on, and I have a concealed weapon, come on. Look at the neighbor and say, yes, pastor's got Susie. Yes, 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 Susie, yes. Susie goes where I go. Come on, somebody. But I didn't have Susie with me. But because of my skin color or because of the way people perceived us, Why do we judge folk? It's our first instinct. We do the very same thing yes. in church. Yes. Amen. 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 Someone is dressed a certain way, someone Amen. is acting a certain way, someone is talking a certain way, and immediately we start to judge folk based on what we see external. Externally. That's right. Amen. It didn't matter that I had a thousand dollars in my pocket. Didn't matter that I was driving a thirty thousand dollar car. It didn't matter that I had a PhD or EDD and two masters and an undergrad. Didn't matter if my son was a, a fourth grade teacher in Lynchburg. That's right. Someone judged us. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Look at your name and say, that's just awful. That's, let's go to the store and march. I mean, but in Jesus' day, people did the very same thing. You remember the lady that was caught in 
adultery. And everybody wanted to stone her. Yes. But you can't be in adultery by yourself. Look at the neighbor and say, sisters, where was the man? Okay, okay, if you're gonna stone me, come on, sir. Where was the sister? That's it. That's how we judge people, you all. And we judge people based on their prior experience. Amen. That's right. We do it every day. At least the attending clerks were bold enough to let me know where they stood. That's right. Now the thing, the question is, the question is, did I spend my money there? Nope. Oh, no. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, did Pastor spend his money there? Did Pastor spend his money No, no, look at your neighbor. Don't look at me. I can say you did. I gave them a lesson about judging people. Come on. Don't judge people because they look a certain way. What does poverty look like? Amen. Come on, sir. That's it. What does hunger look like? There's no face on Thank you, People that have gone through an earthquake and went to Puerto Rico. What does devastation look like, ladies and gentlemen? I went to Texas when there was the flood. People lost everything. What does that look like? They look like you, and they look like me. Do you all hear what I'm saying? And just because you are in here today don't make you any better than someone on the street. You just got a haircut yesterday. But oftentimes, we want to judge people by their past. Y'all better say amen. 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 Beg your pardon? Is it their past or is it the past of others that might hurt? Well, what, 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 what happens is when I begin to judge Pamela, Dr. Pamela, and put Pamela out there, talking about her negatives. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, we all got some. Amen. Amen. Some Amen. fewer than others. But Amen. When I start talking negative, what I'm doing is building my self up. Yeah. And getting people to concentrate on Pam yeah. and not concentrate on Is that what you with the mask? Persona. Yeah. We wear mask. Amen. And we don't want <laughs> most people to see the real you. That's right. Hello. <laughs> I said hello, somebody. Amen. I'm a Dr. Jekyll by night and Mr. Hyde by day. <laughs> Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Catch me on the wrong night. I'm, I've been preaching. But I'm just being honest. Catch me on the wrong night. You might get Dr. Jekyll. Oh, y'all looking at me like, not Pastor Carter. Come on, sir. Come on. The hood is still there. Oh, y'all. Right. Right. Um, Deacon Hill and I grew up in, in, in very similar communities. His community gets my community. Come on. He, 
a hood knows yeah. hood. Come on, somebody. Do you understand? Yes. And even though you get church and you get an education and you drive a 750 BMW and you're living in a quarter of a million house, guess what? Down on the inside, yes. they're still hood. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's it. And you trying to wash it away. I don't talk that way. <laughs> I don't dress that way. I walk like this. I don't eat mustard. I, I, I eat gray poupon. <laughs> That's just a mask. Amen. Jesus wants to know who you really are. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus wants to know. Just be you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a praise right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I just want to say y'all just did my lesson. I, you know, I, I'm like, okay. Jump in right here. But anyway, uh, last week I did more of a lecture. And this week uh, I decided, I said, okay, uh, learning is about a conversation. So this is not going to be a one-way thing. Uh, everybody should have a handout. And if you don't have one and you need one, um, I can see about getting you one. Uh, but I want to look at the questions first, um, something to think about as we go through. And this is going to be a conversation. Um, and before I start, um, I prayed about, I prayed to God and said, you know, what, what do I say, what do I do, uh, how do I teach? This is what I do. So I'm going to give you uh, my best, um, it's about excellence. So I'm going to give you my best and share with you uh, some things that I've learned uh, over time. And it's like uh, Sister Barbara and my car, they did my lesson in like a little mini thing, but we're going to go do through it, it anyway. <laughs> I have a few more details and a couple other things that we want to do. But I want you to look at your handout and it says 2020 vision, what do you see? Um, what are some of the influences? Uh, what, what influences our, our view or our vision of, of our lives or for life? Uh, why is it important to understand uh, the influences that impact our view in our lives? Uh, because Dr. Carter was talking about uh, going into that story yesterday. It took me back to um, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, there was this little story in Farmville called Penelope's. And if anybody that lives in Farmville knows about Penelope's, um, it's a little boutique-ish type of store. And I went in there and uh, jeans and sneakers, Prince Edward teacher. I was looking for a teacher sweater. And I, I knew uh, another teacher that I worked with, she told me where she had gotten hers from. And I was like, I'm going to go get a teacher sweater with the little ABCs on the pocket. And you know, the little schoolhouse on the, on the other pocket. And I'm going to be real cute tomorrow at work. <laughs> so mind you, I walked into Penelope's and uh, started looking around, and I was the only person in there with any melanin in my skin. Um, and the girl walked up to me as fast as I walked into the store, and she says, uh, can I help you with something? I said, no, I'm just looking right now. And then I proceeded to walk around the store. And as I walked around the store, a lady started following me. And when she fought, started following me, I tried on every sweater in the store. <laughs> I looked at the jewelry. And then I touched almost, I mean, anything that I could touch. I tried on all the sweaters. I was like, oh, this is cute. And I looked in the mirror. I spent about 30 minutes in the store. And I was like, dang. This chick followed me all the way. When I say all the way around to the store, and I was like, y'all have a great day. I'm going to go to uh, Belk and spend my money there. I think they have the sweater that I want to get and walk out. So it's like, okay, I was the only black person in there the whole time I was in there. And it was like, okay, uh, why are you following me around? There are other people in the store that you could help. I just told you I don't need any help. I'm, I'm looking right now. So it's like, okay, <laughs> never mind. But I touched as much stuff. I was like, oh, pick stuff up, look at it. Every sweater, 
every teacher sweater they had, I tried it and I was like, ah, no, nah, never mind, this is not what I'm looking for. I think I'm going to go to Bill, very specifically. Uh, but with that said, you know, I can relate uh, to what he went through. Anyway, so getting back to our questions, what are some of the negative influences uh, on our lives? What are some negative influences? Um, these are just thought questions, and we're going to uh, get to them as we go through the lesson. And then what is mindfulness, and are you mindful uh, kind of a thing? On your handout as well, I boosted uh, some scriptures. We're going to touch bases on with several of them. Uh, we've already done, talked about them, but I'm going to incorporate them in the lesson. And then, um, because I'm a teacher, you're going to have homework. I'm going to look forward to seeing everybody back in class. I'm taking a mental snapshot now to see who's here and see who's going to turn in their homework uh, next week. Um, but um, we'll talk about the homework now so you'll be thinking about it uh, because it's going to, the lesson next week is going to tie into what we talk about today, going to make some connections. So when you dream, how do you dream? Do you dream small? Like, I want a new car. Do I just want to get a used car off the lot, or do I want it, um, do I want to get somebody else's old car? Or do I want to get a last year's model, or do I dream big and say, well, I want the 2018 Nissan Rogue. It's going to be hunter green with black leather and seat warmers. Or I want that new BMW. 2018, yeah. The little SUV kind of thing. And I still want it in hunter green with the loose, uh, I call it the butt warmers and the um, <laughs> the steering wheel that, that when you start the car up on a cold day, uh, it heats up so you don't have to even put on gloves when you get in your car. You see your car on this the cold is actually warm. So you know, do you dream big or do you dream small? But I want you to think about uh, your dreams, um, whether you're 16, 17, 18, or a grown lady like me, 53. Uh, I want you to think about some things that you want to achieve, some dreams you have, and I want you to make a list of them. It doesn't matter how extravagant or exaggerated they are. I want you to write them down, just make a list um, of things that you would like to accomplish, um, whether you think they're realistic or not, because every dream is where you start. And then I want you to include Anything and everything, and it doesn't have to be a short list. I'm not going to say the top five. Everything that you can think of. So when you start this list, start it and keep that paper handy so if something pops into your mind, you go, like, oh, yeah. Um, like a few years ago, I went on a ski trip with a group of students, and I was learning how to ski. I didn't master it, but I want to master it. At least make it down the bunny slope at least once. <laughs> just, just once to say, I know how to ski. I got the t-shirt, did that, uh, moving on to something else. Uh, so with that said, uh, that's our handout. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get into our lesson or just our conversation for today. So I have this awesome PowerPoint um, to project, but it's not projected. You have the visual, 2020 vision, what do you see? Um, if I could get somebody to uh, read for me or find and get for me 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, and then I can get another person to find Philippians 2 and 5, uh, that's where we're going to start. Those are going to be our talking points uh, for today. So 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, and um, Philippians 2 and 5, and they're on your handout. And if I could get uh, whoever has... 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 to read that for us. And David was afraid of God and that they said, how shall I bring the ark of God mm -hmm. to hold me? 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 13 okay. verse 12. Okay. You got yes. Finally he decided to take it to the home of Obed. Okay. Am I Am I doing the wrong scripture? First Corinthians 13 and 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but okay. then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. Okay. Yes. That was not. Yes. Okay, that's okay. All right, so 
for when we know in part, and then looking through the looking glass, how do we see ourselves and then how do other people see us? That's going to be our point for today. Mm. Uh, with that said, um, the subtopic on your handout says the mind is a battleground. Speaking to the mind, if I could get someone to read Philippians 2 and 5. <coughs> Walk his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay. Okay. So we had it over here. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What type of mindset do you have? Um, how do you frame life? How do you frame your views about people? When you look at them, what do you see? You know, how how is your view of other people colored? How is your view of life, your life, and yourself coming? Uh, do we see life as a series of opportunities, or do we see life as a series of challenges and struggles, or is it a, a combination of the two? You say combination of the two? Sometimes it's based on your past, like where you've been. And so when you look at the future, you can see, you know, you can always see the past, so it's hard for you to move forward. It's you're always looking at the past. And as far as doing other people, you have to have a spirit of discernment okay. about certain people. That, I mean, it will be judging, but you have to have a spirit of discernment. Okay. When you speak to discernment, uh, understanding of life and how your past colors or influences, and that's, again, you're teaching my lesson. You cheat notes uh, kind of thing so struggles challenges opportunities combination uh, how does it influence how we uh, take things in life and this is going to be our conversation so let me just share a little bit last week I shared some personal things and um, at the bottom of your handout there's this little image it says I know I'm somebody because God don't make no jump that was my mantra when I was a kid. I had this little uh, uh, little card, this little card, little card. It had this exact image on it. I carried it with me everywhere uh, because, like Michelle said, um, how we see the world, how we see our lives, how we see other people is definitely influenced by our past relationships, our past experiences, and expectations for our lives. Right? Um, so if I were to live down to the expectations that were had for my life based on my childhood, and I shared a little bit last week, if I were to live down to uh, those expectations, um, I'm going to describe myself for you guys. If I wasn't already deceased at this point in my life, because I would probably be already deceased, I would be a depressed, cigarette smoking, beverage drinking, and when I say beverage drinking, I'm not talking about Ray Kool-Aid, uh, a beverage drinking mother of, of many children based on some of the comments 